Okay, we're going to take a look at confidence intervals for means. We talked about proportions in class last time, and Anna did the time before, so now we'll do means for uh, to kind of. I want to go over from the beginning on this because I think this is a little bit challenging, or more so than the proportions. So I want to make sure you get this dialed in. So here's the question we're going to start out with. Say we don't know what the average lifespan for a cell phone is. How, what should I do to make an estimate? And your first statement would be, okay, um, buy a cell phone <laughs> or look at a randomly selected cell phone and measure the lifespan. Uh, which is good, but the problem with that is there's a lot of variation. One cell phone might be 14.2, one might be 14.6, one might be 13, and so forth. So what would we do to make a better, to find a better estimate? Okay, better estimate would be to take a sample of 10 phones and find the average lifespan. Does that make sense that that's going to be a little, that's going to be a better, oops, a better average of, um, a better measure of the average lifespan of a cell phone than one phone? And if I want better than that, I could go 50 phones. That's going to be even better. And 100. The bigger the sample size, the better, the more accurate it's going to be. So let's go with 10 and, and talk about that. And suppose for this sample of 10, I got X bar is 14.2 and standard deviation is 0.5. Okay, and we know that N is 10. So in order for us to do this, we have to take a step back now. Let's take a step, take a step back and look at the sample distribution for x bar for all samples of size 10. Okay, so we know from the last video, we said, hey, that's this. The mean is the average and the standard deviation is sigma over the square root of n. So if I take one sample, there it is, the average. Here's another sample, here's another sample, here's another sample. And the samples are going to be looking like this, and we know it's going to be approximately normal since one we have random samples, two, n is less than 10% of the population. In other words, my sample's small enough, they're independent. And three, we said n bigger than or equal to 30, or the population is normal. And we're assuming that it's normal, so we're okay. Okay, so here's where this changes, this is different from proportions. I don't know what sigma is, and I never will. And, my, and I don't know what mu is, I'm trying to make an estimate for that. So I'm going to use S, the standard deviation of my sample, instead of sigma. This is the population standard deviation, sigma. S is for my sample, so I'm going to use that. And I will get 0.5 divided by square root of 10 and get 0.158. Now the problem here, once I switch this from sigma to s, the distribution isn't quite normal anymore. Okay. 
it's a t distribution and that looks like this actually let me see if I can get a different color on here okay the t dis the distribution now goes like that so that's my t distribution and so things are going to change so instead of calculating z scores I'm calculating t scores okay so um, so we just have to change things a little bit with the t so so for this confidence interval let's kind of take a little aside here and see what exactly is a confidence interval well let's suppose I want um, to know how big is an interval that's two standard deviations wide So here's my mean, and I'm going to go 1, 2 standard deviations wide. So this distance here is mu plus 2 standard deviations. Well, what's the standard deviation? That's mu plus 2 times this guy right here, isn't it? 5 over the square root of 10, which is mu plus 10 divided by the square root of 10, and this would be mu minus 10 divided by the square root of 10. Okay, that's an interval that goes two standard deviations out. Okay, now remember the standard deviation we're using s, so it's a little bit different here. That's okay. We're gonna we're gonna just think of it the same way. So this is this is two standard deviations. So I'm gonna make a statement. I'm gonna say x bar is within two standard deviations of mu, right? Okay. So I should I'm I should say if if my sample is somewhere here's two standard deviations is somewhere in the middle here, okay, say that's x bar, then mu is within two standard deviations of x bar. Right? If I'm within five feet of you, then you are within five feet of me. Right? It doesn't make any difference which way we we compare, right? Let's do this. X and O, if this is two inches, X is within two inches of O. Well, isn't O within two inches of X? And the answer is yes. Okay, so I'm using the same principle here. I'm saying if X bar is somewhere within two standard deviations of the mean, which is right here, then mu is going to be within two standard deviations of x bar. Okay, this is the premise for my confidence interval. Mu is in the interval x bar minus two standard deviations x bar plus two standard deviations. This is the low number, this is the high number. Okay, so what standard deviation? Well, first of all, let's write it like this. x bar plus or minus two standard deviation. And so that's going to be x bar plus or minus two times s over the square root of n. Okay, now where did this two come from? That 2 came from the number of standard deviations, which normally is z. But since this isn't a normal curve, this is what we call a t curve, I have to use t. And so I get x bar plus or minus t 
times s over the square root of n. Now there's a table to calculate t, but I don't want to worry about that right now. We're going to let our calculator calculate what that t is. So I know part of this is this is like, oh my gosh, this is a lot here. But it really simplifies to this. Okay, let's go back to my sample. Is x bar equals 14.2 s is 0.5 and n is 10. So I want to find a 95% confidence interval for mu, the average battery life. So the question is, what does that look like now then? Well, the condition, those conditions are met, so I'm going to say check conditions. We already did up above. Okay, these, these conditions have to be met right here. Okay, random sample, and is less than 10%, and the population is normal. Okay, the, all battery lives is a normal distribution, which we said. So a confidence interval has this form. So I'm just going to write down, I'm doing, this is called a T interval for when we do it on our calculator. And that is the formula is X bar, and I will give you this formula, plus T, we call it T star, S over the square root of N. So for this problem, it's 14.2 plus or minus T star. I don't know what that is. Again, there's a table to look it up, but we're going to let our calculator do it for us. And then S is 0.5 over 10, square root of 10. And so I'm going to go on my calculator, and I'm going to do stat, test, T interval, I think is what it looks like. So I've got it over here. Stat, test. T interval is number eight. And what you want to put in is here's the what your calculator says. It's going to say input. You want to go stat. X bar. You're going to go 14.2. SX is going to be 0.5. N equals 10. C level is 0.95 and then calculate and if you do all of those things you're gonna get this 13.8 comma 14.6 I rounded those okay, and so what does that mean this is an interval hours 13.8 hours 14.6 hours so mu, well, let me say that, the average battery life mu lies in this interval. So the way we interpret that is I say I'm 95% confident that the true average battery life lies between 13.8 hours and 14.6 hours. So this is my confidence interval. This is this is my estimate. Remember my question was how do you estimate what the true battery life is? Well here it is. There's my estimate and it's based on this sample. Okay, so now I'm going to shrink this down and ask you guys to do a question. So I want you to do this. Estimate the um, true um, average battery life.
you have a sample um, with x bar equals 12.1, s equals 0.8 hours, and you took 30 phones. Okay, so go ahead and hit pause and try the problem based on what we did here. Okay, so I can sit here and wait for five minutes, but that probably wouldn't be that great since you have a pause button. So hit pause. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you, you tried the problem and you looked at this. So what has to happen for me to do a problem like this? Well, one, I got to check the conditions. So the conditions. Um, one, is it a random sample? I said it's a sample. We're going to assume that's true because if it's not random, it doesn't. It's a bad sample. And I can't do anything with it. Is n is 30, is that less than 10% of the population? Yes. 3. Um, is n greater than or equal to 30? Well, actually it is. So we're good. All right, so the conditions are met. 2. We're going to do a t interval because sigma is unknown. Okay, I don't know the population standard deviation, so I have to use s instead. So the interval is x bar plus or minus t star s over the square root of n. See, normally I'd use sigma. If I use sigma, this would be z, but we don't know that, and we never will. So my interval is going to be 12.1 plus or minus t star s over the square root of n is 0.8 over the square root of 30. And I'm going to do that in my calculator, so I'm going to go stat test, go down to 8, which is the t interval, and put in 12.1. Standard deviation is 0.8. N is 30. Okay, now i got a problem, because I'm looking at my calculator, it says C level. I didn't tell you what confidence level to make, right? So, let's go back up here. Estimate the true battery life with a 98% confidence interval. So I'll come back up here. And when I do it in my calculator, I got to put in 98%. And I get 11.74, 12.46. So that's what I, my estimate is for the true average battery life. So I'm going to write that down and say I'm 98% confident that the true average battery life is between 11.7 hours and 12.5 hours. Okay, so that's the average, the true average battery life. Okay, based on my sample, this is my interval. Does that make sense? This is a formula. I will give you this formula to use all the time. Um, so you just have to be able to identify is this a means? Or if it's a proportion, the formula for that was p hat plus or minus z star square root of p hat q hat over n. That's what we did the other day. So this is enough information for you now to do um, 9.1 and 9.2. And I'm going to come back on the next video and do hypothesis testing. All right, there you go.